Hello friends and greetings for all today. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Level Test Management Certification. We are in Chapter 1 talking about managing the test activities and continuing ahead with 1.6 that is test tools. And today we shall be looking forward to the next sub-segment that is 1.6.2 Technical and Business Aspects for Tool Decision. And here we would be mainly understanding what other factors comes into aspects of our discussion when it comes to the tool selection and rolling it out. So there are many other considerations which we must be worried about. As a part of our previous tutorial, we discussed on several considerations which are required before selecting the tool and after selecting the tool. We also discussed that how it is important for the organization to transform their process conduct some kind of training, coaching, and mentoring things, which are additional cost and process, and also look forward to see how the tool will best fit into the process and the organization to give us the maximum benefit. But today we shall be talking about the technical and business aspects, what they look forward to from the tool when a new tool is being introduced. No matter whichever you talk about, be it about commercial, be it about open source or custom built tools, we have these considerations always taken into account. So let's quickly see what exactly they are and how does this add value in the tool selection process and rolling out. So multiple factors certainly impact the decision regarding the implementation and usage of the tools. For a test manager, it is important to know and address them. For example, the first one is regulation and security. The organization that develops safety critical or mission critical software are subjected to regulatory compliances and may prefer commercial tools as they more often meet the required standard and often possess the appropriate certifications. So I think this is not something new for us to understand. Being at this position, uh, when you are preparing for this examination, you have already been through this part of it. Say, for example, I bought a tool from the market and then I realized that this is the best tool for my project and I would like to proceed with this. And suddenly the security and compliance team comes to you and say that, hey, is this ISO so and so? accredited or is this approved by ISO so and so an answer is like no then of course we cannot use it because compliance is another thing which we have to comply with or what if you don't talk about external standards internal regulations and compliances are also there for example your security team can come and say that does it have multi-factor authentication is there a way we can do it as enterprise edition the enterprise edition is like private kind of instance which you have instead of multi-tenant cloud these days, a lot of tools are cloud-based and we don't want multi-tenant cloud because of our data or maybe because of our compliances and we have to comply with them. So sometimes you may have really good tool for your purpose, but they may not meet your requirements with respect to regulatories, compliances, etc. So we have to take this into account and consider them as well before we roll out the tool. The second important thing, the financial aspects. So of course, open source tools usually come at lower initial cost because of community support and development. Commercial tools may have one-time purchase price as well as recurring license cost. The initial cost of custom tool is difficult to determine because it depends on the requirement and the stage of development of the tool. Besides the initial cost, the cost of training and maintenance over the lifetime of a tool must be calculated and considered. All tools may have high maintenance and support cost. Now this is what the financial part is talking about, no matter what you have, but you have variety of costs involved. For example, commercials may have one-time purchase at the same time recurring licensing. Same way, open source may have initially no cost or maybe limited cost to procure and set it up, but may require frequent updates to be taken care of. For example, if you look at Selenium, we do say that Selenium is open source, easy, but point is everything has to be written by hand from the scratch. You don't get any kind of user friendliness, Everyone should be well versed with the programming languages and there might be frequent update. For example, this method is depre deprecated now and you need to use something else. So changes keep happening. So there might be need of modifying your script again and again. So they may have high maintenance costs for sure. And same thing happens with the custom build tool. So it's not that if you're making it in-house, there are no costs involved. The people have to work like a development project on this and we have to see how best we can uh, get the cost uh, for the training and other things. So there are some costs which are common in all three types of tool like training, mentorship and maintenance. 
So we should financial aspect would more talk about what is the cost we are going to invest on a long term basis and what is the returns we are expecting from it. The third element here to talk about is, of course, the stakeholder requirements. Now, it's just not limited to us. There are many people who are going to get involved. So it is important to gather the requirements from all the stakeholders to evaluate and identify the most appropriate tool. Commercial tools and open source tools do not necessarily fulfill all requirements in detail. Whereas custom tool being that it is built inside the office or inside the premises may have the best choice to meet all the individual requirement and in instance where no other tool provides the required functionality. See one benefit of being uh, having the custom build tool is that we can de design it and implement it the way we want and we don't have to manage with you know ready-made tools because ready-made tools may require a little bit of alteration and sometimes these alterations are just not possible because for one company, the vendor may not change their features. So that's one benefit you get of the custom build tools. But at the same time, when it comes to the other tool like commercial and open source, they certainly have a lot of other things involved. So stakeholder requirements are certainly, which are very much important to be considered. For example, a development team might be interested to see some of the fields. So am I allowed to add custom fields in my defect report when using a defect management tool? Same way, if I'm using a test management tool, there are stakeholders like developer, designer, manager who might want to create some kind of report or collect some data from the tool. But what if the tool does not support that? So that is where the stakeholder requirements becomes important for us to consider and include into our account before selecting a type of tool. And the last one here, of course, is to talk about existing software landscape and tool strategy. In simple words, we are just talking about that the new tool might be required to integrate with other tools to exchange information or work in a CI/CD pipeline of DevOps. So if in case you have any such specifications or requirements, you should look forward to the tool which can be integratable with other tool chains. So the point says the existing composition of tool and the associated tool strategy must be evaluated as there may be preferred or locked vendors, integrated systems, that have dependencies with other products or special full service support model for the entire software landscape with specific regulations. So indeed, that's exactly the point that it's not that this new tool will work standalone. There might be integrations required and whether this tool allows me to do that. If it does not allow, it does not work with other tools, it's not compatible. These are some of the other additional considerations we look forward to also take into account to bring a new tool to the existence and make use of it with most possible better efficiency. So at the end of the day, these are just like a typical list of those things what we do consider on very commonly basis within many organizations. But ISDQB never says that this is the full list of things. You need to identify being a manager within your organization, what other considerations may play a vital role in selecting your tool. So always consider that, find out those pointers and take them into account before concluding with your selection. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.